Come on in, laddo. I'll give you a ball in a bit. Back on the pit site, guys. How do? Very muggy today. I hope we find uh, most of you in good spirits. Hopefully some of you are getting out some fresh air. People are always commenting on Stephen. Uh, he's got a lovely coat, etc, etc. He gets plenty of fresh air. He gets fed. He gets groomed. That's with a brush. Again, sadly, that quite often means something else now. And he gets a lot of love. Bit of a lesson there. We all know what it needs, guys. Unfortunately, some of you out there don't get that. So today, I'm just going to tell you what it was like at Forest Bank Private Sector Prison. Just an average day. Then I'll take you to Strange Ways. Tell you what it was like there. And then I'll tell you what it's like now, pretty much everywhere. Before I do, in the description, we've got socials, two new socials, Twitter, Instagram, Real Porridge Podcast. Um, links in the description. Okay, Forest Bank. I'm just going to tell you an average working day for me when I was on a wing. Some things have changed now. Shift patterns and the like, but this is just an average day just to tell you what it was like. So me, I'd be in work somewhere between six, ten past six. You go through a padlock, basically that's a sliding door, you walk into an area, door shuts, another door opens in front of you. Most prisons, cat be and the like, something similar. Collect my keys, walk down to the wing. We started at half past six. Before I even get going, his name's just come to me, wow. There was a lad. Um, he was a nice lad. I, I didn't meet him till he was in a bad way. What do I mean by that? He injured his back whilst going into work at Forest Bank. As, as you collected your keys, like I've already said, you'd walk down a corridor. Uh, I think the officers were to the left where the staff were. This is the office block, main block. It's a sterile area, no prisoners. You'd go through a door into another sterile area. Again, no prisoners. Some vehicles in there before you got onto Main Street and down to the main prison. So as you come out of the office block, there was a step. He's coming to work. He slipped on that step and hurt his back. When I say hurt his back, it's an understatement. This lad as well was a exceptional soldier um, of the special forces type. Um, done quite a military career. Basically, he walked the walk and he talked the talk, been there, got a t-shirt. He hurt his back. Uh, he was in a bad way. Like I say, when I met him, I'd been in the job about 12 months. Really nice lad, really humble. And I've got to say, guys, he was fucked. His back was fucked. At that point, I don't know what happened to him. He was trying to um, get money together to go to America for an operation that was 70-30%. That's 30% in his favour, 30% he would be cured. 70% chance he'd never walk again. As it was, he was double incontinent. Um, can't imagine his struggles, uh, the angst and stress on his face. And like I say, he was an humble guy. He was pleasant. He was the sort of guy I would have got on with. I'd definitely have got on with him. Um, so let's talk about him getting injured. He got injured some, some time before half past six. This is a true story, this guy's. Not insured. That's what he got first from the company. You're not insured. You're not insured till half past six. We're talking 15 minutes, life-changing injury. 
massively life-changing someone who's been a soldier at that level uh, supremely fit everyone said he was an absolutely fantastic prison officer got got everything got all the skills to nothing his solicitor um, you know they tried to plead with the company look this guy works for you no nothing they went everywhere nothing not getting nothing from the company you weren't insured weren't insured till half past six 15 minutes life-changing injury I don't know what happened to that guy if anyone does in the comments or drop us an email real porridge at outlook.com lovely lovely man life ruined sad okay so we'd start at half six this is back then seven o'clock we were supposed to unlock all the prisoners that's pretty early that um, you'd unlock one cleaner who would start making toast we had an industrial toaster just like rotating so you put toast in boom 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 a minute to come out the other side the idea was that everyone got two slices of toast that was the first stress in my day because i would have four loaves which would maybe do half the wing stress so usually half six to seven i'm phoning around trying to get bread now some wings had shit loads some people didn't have that stress who you know or whatever me i did i would scrounge bread from anywhere Fuck him, you say. Yeah. You're not there at 10 past seven when you unlock. Half the wing gets toast and half doesn't. Yeah. They're straight up to office. Yeah. They're not asking politely, Mr. S, I have no toast. Yeah. So we're not even started the day in that stress. Everyone would be unlocked till about eight o'clock. We would then send people to work and education. Tick them off. Lock everyone up. I used to make it a leisurely lock up. Might take 20 minutes. Usually find yourself at some point on your own because your other member of staff had gone somewhere and there's only two of you on a wing with 86 prisoners. Again, if you've not worked at that level of staffing, like some people haven't, don't criticise people who are doing it. It's a tough gig. People are either away in the office or they're out there getting it. Yeah, front line, boom. You'd lock them up, maybe about half past 10. You'd have the cleaners out, that's all. They're prisoners who used to clean the wing. Usually good lads, usually a couple of hard lads. Had my back more than a few times. Half 10, you do excise. Uh, thankfully, it was quite a new prison, excise yard. Next door, straight out, straight on excise. Um, Labour, education, had come back, I don't know, sometime, sometime between 11 and half past. You'd lock everyone up again, get your cleaners out. Um, at Forest Bank, the cleaners used to get their scran first, cleaners and servery workers. So they'd get their meal, uh, then we'd start unlocking. Then, at that time, everyone out over dinner. That was a... It was a... It was a bad time. There was a lot of assaults at dinner. Um, again, if there's two members of staff, which there only ever was, you were working usually on your own. Other member of staff was either new, scared, or just not present. Um, it's a fact. That's how it was. The Oscar ones, they're the shift managers. What they would do in the morning, they would make sure they got one decent member of staff on each wing, and then they'd send someone to make up the numbers. This is a good while ago, this. 20 years nearly. Dinner time, if it went off without any incidents, it was a good dinner time. You would then send people off to labor again, leisurely, lock up, cleaners out. Tea time, unlock everybody, and they'd be out till about eight o'clock, yeah? If your day went without incident, it was a good day. If you got another member of staff, a good member of staff, it was a good day, a very good day. Extremely stressful. 
shift patterns were rubbish. You worked two out of every three weekends. Um, tough job. Here's the bit, I loved it. I enjoyed it. A lot of conflict, a lot of stress. Um, single lad back then. Used to go out and drink. I did go into work, pissed. Um, never drove, always got taxis. Um, I will say in the private sector, uh, I made some very good friends. It was, it, it, it was shocking conditions. Forgot to mention, most dinner times, if I was on a wing, you would get a phone call. Sam, come to the centre office, you'd be getting kitted up for a planned removal. That means someone is getting moved to the segregation. That's a fact in the matter. Come on, Stevie. Stevie, fact of the matter. Um, again, the Oscar ones, I'd look who they got on shift. Um, usually, they will get people who aren't going to escalate things. So if you can talk and you've got a big bottle, you're a good person, then the Oscar ones are going to use you. I got used a lot at Forest Bank. You could say cannon fodder. Um, most situations, planned removals, where you're in full riot gear, went off without any trouble. People would walk. Lock them up at night, depending what wing you were on. Could take anything from 15 minutes to an hour. Um, quite often we went off shift late. Uh, I partied hard when I played there. I earned a lot of money, my last P60, if you're not from this country, at the end of your tax year, you get a P60 which tells you exactly how much you've earned. I think then, 2003, 2004, I was on about 18 or 20 grand a year and my P60, I earned 36,000 pounds. So that other 16 grand is overtime. Yeah, I work shit loads of hours. Uh, party hard, played hard, you know, I'm not saying I'm proud of that, but that's how it worked. It was a tough job and just used to go out and get smashed. Um, and like I say, some cracking lads and lasses in that job. A lot of young staff. Um, they were really good though. Towards the end, I fell out of love with it. I was involved in an incident that went to investigation and it was never the same job for me there. So let's go to Strange Ways, K-Wing. Stephen, come on kidder. Strange Ways, K-Wing. Again, took me six months to settle in, a lot more staff around, way more staff. If we go back to Forest Bank, when there was an alarm bell, you usually dealt with an incident with prisoners out. So 86 lads on the wing, two might be fighting, 84 watching you. The other member of staff might not be present. They've ran off, pressed the alarm bell, hiding in office, gone to the toilet or whatever. That's a fact. You might get eight or nine or 10 staff come on the wing to help you with that incident. I've been on a wing when three or four staff have turned up. Yeah, it was a tough gig. I enjoyed a lot of it, um, but eventually I fell out of love. So strange ways, K-Wing. K-Wing was a remand wing. So at that time, prisoners were out all day. So we would, similar, get on shift seven o'clock. Somebody would take the early start off, the night man. Um, we'd unlock for medication and labor and education first, just them gonna work. We'd have a list, send them off to work. Um, maybe about eight, half eight. We'd unlock the rest of the wing. They would have an exercise in the morning, Monday to Friday. Uh, maybe lock them back up 11, between 11 and half past. And then labor and education would come back to the wing. Um, usually K-Wing, it was a late dinner for everybody. Uh, we might end up finishing serving meals at quarter to one. An hour dinner, you didn't actually get an hour, you were short on your time. Uh, yeah, that was it. 
afternoon, unlock everybody, send people off to work and labour again, four o'clock-ish, lock people up, labour had come back half four five, lock them up. You'd have your tea then while everyone was locked up. Six o'clock, evening duty, that was six while eight. Serve meals at six o'clock, everyone's out two hours. A lot happening all day. Again, loved it on there. Plenty of times, uh, squeeze your bum cheeks together. You know, really, uh, some of the incidents were scary as, you know, it's adrenaline that guys. Come here, laddo. Just let the train go, guys. It was a tough gig, but it was also enjoyable. Um, at Strange Ways and on our never drank on a school night, never went into Strange Ways pissed. Never. Yeah. Uh, I didn't drink a lot at that time. That's pretty much because I worked every day, you know. Um, the fallout being my family. Didn't see my daughter for six, seven years. Our last spent a lot of time on her own. Hopefully, you know. We'll get her in the car and uh, I'll ask her questions about living with a prison officer. Summit for people to bear in mind. There's a lot of people contact me worried about their loved ones in that job. Do you know what? It's quite a long one, this guy's, but I didn't do one yesterday. Not feeling too well. Um, so you see similar work days, strange ways, a lot more stuff. So let's talk about now. Okay, there's been a global situation yeah whether you you believe it or not uh, it's affected everybody from schools care homes prisons everybody it's affected us prisons now have pretty much been locked down for years and that's not how how long this global um pandemic's been going on they've been on their ass uh way before that I've got a 2.15 at Strange Ways. 2.15 at Strange Ways. Uh, life changed for me last six months. My job, and this is all down to staffing. Yeah. Forget everything else. It's staffing. You need enough staff, decent staff. You need to retain staff. You need to train your staff right. Anything to do with staff is massively important. 2.15. Uh... Up to March the 1st, Strange Ways, you know, it was a good prison, it had a regime, not too many serious incidents. Yeah, people would say it was a safe place to work and live. Then it all changed, massive reductions in staff, conditions of staff, you know, pensions, shifts, working till you're 67, 68, no one's working to that age. Um, it just means that if you finish at 55 or 40 stressed out, it's another 28 years till you see your pension. Disgusting. Anyway, my job last six months at Strange Ways was very much task orientated. There's none of getting people out on association, yeah, chatting with them, that sort of thing. That's all gone. Literally, I was still on healthcare, it'd get locked down, which meant no one would be coming out and they would redeploy staff. So Sam, first thing in the morning, eight o'clock, go to D-Wing, help unlock and send people to labor, I'd do that. Sam, can you go to C-Wing and do an exercise? So I'd go to C-Wing and do an exercise. Sam, can you go to A-Wing? And that's what it was, yeah? Now, if you join the prison service in the last five years, that is pretty much what your job will be, that's what you're used to. Me, um, it created a lot of problems. Uh, it was just a massive struggle to do anything because of the lack of staff. And if there was an incident, the lack of staff was just, it just exasperated it. I managed to say that, didn't I? Yeah, exasperated. It exasperated it because you'd lose even more staff. It was shocking. I got myself in a lot of conflict and I ended up, boom, stressed as. Um, I still think back then, if I hadn't got injured me, you know, maybe stroke, heart attack, that were quite serious. My doctor was, was adamant that had been where I would have ended up. Um, so let's look now. Coming out of a pandemic, uh, prisons. 
there's going to be no more association. Robert Buckland, Minister for Prisons, whatever he is, POA, Prison Officers Association, the union, who were there for the shop floor workers, for prison officers. You know, they're talking about no more association. What they're good at doing is telling you what they're going to be doing and not what the problems are. Yes, we are going to get people out for personal activity. Send them to work and education. Okay, so some of you are thinking, well, that's good, isn't it? Give, give some people the skills. Reality check. I know people who come out of prison with degrees. People who went into prison who had careers. Yeah, When they come out, they still struggle to get jobs and settle back into a normal life. Anyone who goes back to prison, more victims. It's all about victims, guys. Um, the environment now will be very, very hostile. Uh, a very young workforce, inexperienced. They're struggling to retain people. A lot of sickness. People are still earning money, I know that. I've been speaking to people, half a dozen people, concerned about their loved ones with the hours they are working. Literally, working themselves to death. Yep, overtime rate's very good and no shortage of overtime you see the prison service like a lot of other businesses i'd rather have people working overtime than have permanent staff with pensions and the like fact so if we look at it now very little time out of cell some prisons better than others people have had a shower every day maybe access to a phone call something like that and maybe some exercise other prisons four days one shower every four days you know, some people, maybe a week, no phone call, no canteen, whatever. Different prisons, the fact is they're all struggling for staff. Um, drugs out of control. So let's talk about spice, the main drug of choice. Um, prison service working hard to get a test for spice so they can start punishing people. So People are locked behind the doors, everyone's using spice. People who've never taken drugs in prison. They get a test, what are you gonna do? People are locked up 23 hours a day. Some aren't getting showers and phone calls, regular. And again, those of you that want prison to be hard, yeah, that's fine. People have to unlock these people and try and look after them and facilitate them. And they're not qualified to do that right now. They haven't got the numbers and they're not qualified. They haven't got the experience, yeah. So if they get a piss test for spice, what are they going to do? The only thing people have got now is the TVs in cell. You know, go back 40 years, no TV, no toilet. We're not going to take the toilets out. We'll leave them in. Take TVs. It's just going to kick off. People are going to be violent. And let me tell you about piss testing. I will do a vlog on piss testing. MDT, mandatory drug testing. Yeah? Used to be a bit of a a dark art, a specialist job. Bullshit. Don't excuse the pun, piss easy. If people had shown me how to do it properly, I would have pissed it, yeah? No pissing problem. I'll talk about MDT. It's bent. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Prison as it was, prison as it is now. And for me now, victims, people coming out, no skills, no nothing, angry, you know, hooked on spice, just gonna create more crime. And we're building more prisons. Again, somewhere between 30,000 and 40,000 to keep someone locked up in custody. Yeah, surely we could be doing something else. I'm not saying, you know, th this isn't me, people know this, but talking about it does nothing. Me. I'll keep vlogging, I'll keep doing my bit, mental health, whatever I can do. But all these people with their heads up their asses out there, you know, in these reform groups and everything else, if you're not at cold face, you're not looking what's happening regarding staffing, yeah? Because the people at the top don't care. Okay. Quite a serious one, that. So... Lado sat there, I'm going to game his ball now. Um, if you've got a story to tell, guys, you don't have to be in prison, then let me know. Question and answer Thursday with Carl. Carl's going to be asking me questions. I don't know the questions. Uh, he's a nice guy, I like him a lot. He's got a bit of character. He's going to be asking me questions. 
at the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, part one, part two, it'll either be the Geordie boy, the white collar worker, or LJ, who is now feeling better. So question and answer Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, content both days, 6 p.m. Cheers, guys. Uh, I know what you have to, kid. Sit down then and be good. Sit down. Yes, you are beautiful. Thanks for coming, guys. I'll see you.